I want to read today out of Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. Somebody say with me, focus. Come on, like you're awake, say focus. The Word of God deserves a response, okay, and we're here on purpose. So I want to invite you to be awake. Habakkuk chapter 2, verses 2 and 3. The Word of God states in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. Write the vision, make it plain. For the vision is yet for an appointment time, but at the end it will speak. It will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it. Somebody say, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. I don't know what you're expecting. I don't know what you're waiting for. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus has something greater than what you're expecting. And that what he had promised for us when he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That's for today. And in his vision, and in his vision, we'll be able to walk in what he has for us. But you have to stay focused on him. Close your eyes with me. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your goodness over our life. I thank you, Father, that you have promised that you'll be with us. I thank you that... We are walking in a time in which we will see prophecies fulfilled. And we know that you you are walking next to us. So today I pray that anything that's not yours right now, you would take it away. God, take away our reasoning and put your faith. Take away, God, our doubt. And I pray that you'll put your love. Uh, Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts today. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. I couldn't believe that she said yes to me said, will you marry me? She said, yes. I didn't propose. It was over the phone. Uh, We never dated. I had known her since we were 12 years old or 20 years old. And she says, yes, uh, we get married in three weeks. Somebody smile. (laughs) Three weeks. We get married in three weeks. Uh, After the honeymoon, we come over to my apartment and I realized I didn't have furniture. So I said, one day we're going to buy furniture. She says, I know we will. I said, one day we're going to buy a house. Hey, let's write down the type of house we're going to buy. We draw the house we want. Somebody say with me, dream again. You know, and we're going over. One day we're going to have two kids. She says, yes. Uh, uh, you know, we're going to go ahead and name uh, our daughter uh, Isabella. And we start writing down. Uh, I said, listen, um, my son, I'm the third. So he's going to have to be named Juan Jose de Jesus Olivares Cantu, the fourth. And she says, ah, we'll pray about that. <laughs> you, know, you know, when somebody says, we'll pray about that, what, what does that really mean? Oh. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, he, he, he's still Jose, so he's Pepitito, okay? Because I'm Pepito, so he's Pepitito. Um, we write it down, and we're saying, this is where we're going to go. We didn't see it yet, but we knew it was going to happen. We just read a scripture right now that says, write the vision. Uh, something happens through the years that we, we forget to go back to the vision. Sometimes you have to go back to the vision just to say, thank you, God. But sometimes you got to go back to the vision to say, God, what's next? Come on. And, and I believe that if we stay focused in the vision, see, the vision was never about me. See, I didn't want a house for me. I wanted a house for them. Uh, the vision is never about you. And, and the more you focus on what he's called you to do, the more you're going to be able to see more what he has for you. In Luke chapter 10, there's a story that I want us to study together. In Luke chapter 10, I'm going to start with verse 38. It says, now it happened as they went to the, to, as they went, that he entered a certain village. Talking about Jesus. And a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she said, she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. Okay, where was Mary? Next to Jesus. But Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said Lord do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone therefore tell her to help me come on have you ever approached Jesus this way I'm going to tell you what I need you to do tell her to, to come and help me and Jesus answered and said to her Martha Martha you are worried and troubled about many things but one thing somebody say with me one thing one thing is needed and Mary has chosen that good part. That good part, which will not be taken away from her. I, I want to show it to you this way. Um, Martha is busy making sure that the house is ready. 
making sure that the house is available, but she doesn't make herself available. Um, and, and today, I want to invite you to focus on what's really important. See, the vision that God has for you is greater, but you need to make sure you stay focused. Not only what's really important, and not only on what matters, but you need to focus on Him. Because, you know, what can happen to us is, let me just show it to you this way, you know. Um, this is me, Monday through Saturday, church. You know, you know, it's okay, it's okay, uh, you know, happy wife, happy life. Or as my mom said, as she's learning English, she said, happy wife, happy night. I was like, I'll take that too. I'll take that too, you know. She's like, isn't that what you say, mijo? Isn't that what you say? Yes, mom, that's what we say. So I'm putting, you know, all my gear that I, that I wear, you know, on my gear. I forgot my, you know, everything else that I put on. But I want you to see this, okay? Martha has Jesus in the house. <laughs> Come on, I need you to think about this. Jesus is in the house, and she's busy. Oh, my goodness. I hope he doesn't come into the restroom. Come on, ladies in the house. You know, I can believe, I can believe all these things. Jesus is here. Come on, guys, help me out. Come on, any of you ever had visitors, unexpected visitors? You know, I don't want to know what happens to ladies specifically, you know, but something changes when they have something in the house. It's just like, go clean the garage. I'm like, what? Go clean the garage. Go clean it now. The cars don't even fit in the garage. I mean, go clean it. Go clean it now. <laughs> Make sure the bed is made in the room. What are we going to invite anybody to our room? I don't even let the kids go into our room. No, make sure everything is, I want you to imagine Martha's going and going and she, and she only doesn't only be, she doesn't just start complaining about this. She complains to Jesus. <laughs> you know, why, why is it that, that when we have a trip, when we have a time for us to enjoy, we go to a place of stress? Why is it that when, you know, when, when Jesus is present in a place we can see him, can, can it be that we're too busy? I, and I've learned this. Anytime I have anxiety in my life, it's because I'm worried about something that is not happening. Anxiety is worrying about the future. And anytime I'm depressed because my emotions get tricky, your emotions will trick you if you don't live. If you, somebody say focus. If you're not focused in him. Anytime I have depression, it's because I'm saddened about something that happened in the past. To the person next to you, you're not there anymore. You're not there anymore. Why do you keep going back to that place? Well, it's because this relationship is because all these things. And Jesus is here with you. But it's like, oh, man, come on. Man, doesn't that look good? I, I love when women do this. Doesn't that look good? And you're like, yeah, it looks great. Mm. <sighs> How can you say it looks good? It looks good to me. Well, it's because you don't have eyes to see. Some of you guys are like, Pastor, that was me this morning with my wife. How did you? Let's clean again. Come on, clean again. Come on, raise your hand if you've done things two or three times that you already cleaned. Come on, I want to know. I see you. I see you. It doesn't look good enough. Do I have perfectionists in the house? Amen. Can I tell you, listen, listen. And the more you go and the more you try to clean, the more faults you find. Because we will never be good enough out of our own. But Jesus says, Martha, Martha. One thing. Somebody say with me, one thing. He doesn't say 10 things. He doesn't say, here's the 20 steps for you to get saved. It, it doesn't say, you know, here you go. Make sure that you follow all this. And if you miss this one, mm, you can sit with me. Somebody say one thing. He says, one thing is necessary, and she has chosen, thank you, Jeffrey. Come on, give a hand to Jeffrey. Thank you, Jeff, the man. He says, one thing is necessary, just one thing. Are you sure just one thing? So if you have to change like 30 things in my life before I can get close to Jesus. He says, just one thing. What is that? Be here with me. Just be where I am. There's been so many times in my life where I've been so busy and that I missed them. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 through 14, this is Paul speaking. Paul who wrote more than half of the New Testament. Paul who saw, 
Jesus do amazing things. Paul that uh, is a pioneer that takes the church to places nobody else has taken him. I want you to see who's speaking. He says, brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. I I don't think I've already won, is what he's saying. But one thing I do. Come on. One thing. How many things? One thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting what happened 10 years ago. Forgetting what happened at another church. Forgetting what happened at the other job. Forgetting what happened. And reaching. I love this word because, you know, reaching is is something that I have to uh, do on purpose. See, because many of us say, you know, I forget about the past, but we forget to reach forward. I have to reach to those things which are ahead, to the vision that he's placed in front. I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call. This is the goal, the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. What is the call of God in your life? I'm not saying what's the purpose. I'm not saying what you're striving. I need you to get this because we can have a job. We can have purpose. But if we don't answer to the call, we're missing it. The call is, that's the call. You know, I grew up in the church and people said, we, we don't have religion. We have relationship. How many of you heard that? And we love saying it. But we become religious. What do you mean? What do you mean I'm saved? I I need to make sure I do all these things. See, I've learned that works are part of who we are, but works are not who we are. Works are not who we are. If if what you do defines you, you're missing Jesus. Um, If people define you, you're missing Jesus. And I can do so many things. Look, um, and I I also learned this, okay, the people that you help the most are always going to be the ones that are going to criticize you the most. Because they, they end up, come on, I'm teaching you something. They end up depending on you instead of depending on God. And sometimes you need to move out of the way so they can see God. That was for free, okay? Good job, Pastor. That's a good preach. Come on, like, hey, I, I'm telling you this because, look, I, we, we have this Messiah complex that we have to fix things. Okay, marry people in the house, look at me, please. Okay, marry people, look at me. You don't have to change your spouse. All the men said amen. Did you hear that? The women are like, what? What do you mean, pastor? If you change your spouse, you're missing out on the best part of you. (laughs) Because there's nothing that will make you grow more into Jesus than your spouse. There's nothing that's going to, Jesus be Lord of this. There's nothing that's going to make you die more. To not live for you. But to truly love like he loves. In James chapter 4 verse 8, scripture says, draw near to God. What does it say? Can you read it with me? He draw near to you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. Anybody in here know people that are double-minded? I'll go to church Sunday, uh, maybe next Sunday. I'll forgive, mm, but first I'll make sure I take vengeance. Um, I love you, but uh, I really want you to do what I tell you to do. So I don't really love you. I just, <laughs> I've learned that everybody's submissive until they don't agree with you. I'm here, pastor. Anything you need me to do, I need you to do this. Oh, not that, pastor. I want to do this. I many, I many times we come to God this way. Like Martha. Martha, you know, comes over to Jesus and says, Jesus, don't you see that everything I've done and you have this lazy Next to you, don't you see what I'm doing? Anytime you're talking about you and what you do, you're missing Jesus. Ten years into our marriage, I tell my wife, man, remember everything we wrote down? (laughs) We're almost there. Just three more cars, you know? Just, you know, just, just two more vacations a year. 
You know, I, I realized that, uh, come on, this is for somebody, that I would use vacations to compensate for the time I wasn't there. Because I'll be working from 6 in the morning to 10 at night. You know, people that say I'm busy, what they're really saying is I'm too important for you. That one's for free too. Anytime I would say I'm busy, what I'm saying is you're not as important as what I'm doing. I've learned to say when people say, Pastor, I know you're busy, and I know you have a lot of time. I'm not busy. How can I help you? I'm not busy. You're important. And I told my wife, listen, we're almost there. And she tells me, what's the vision? What's the goal? What do you mean? I'm doing all these things, you know, so we can, you know, continue to say, come on, Dave Ramsey. We're getting out of debt. We're doing all these things. You know, we're doing things right. She's like, we're getting out of debt, but we're not enjoying anything. Hey, hey, listen, I'm the head. The Bible says, how many of you have used the Bible? The Bible says, (laughs) talking about you. It's not about Jesus. Somebody say with me, focus. So she says, if you're doing all this for us, how come, we never, how come we never see you? If you're doing all this, and you're saying you're doing it for the church, how come you're not with people? If we say we're salt and light, and we say this is about relationship, I got to make sure that I sit with him. See, because we cannot love God and not love our family. We cannot love God and not love his house. He said, listen, you don't speak to me that way. As I put on my apron. Don't you tell me what to do as I'm putting up my clothes. I thought that being a man meant that she had to obey me. And I realized that being a man meant that I was serving her. And I was serving my family. Because I want to look like him. Because I want to sit with him. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, look at scripture and verse 22. The lamp of the body, okay, your whole body, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. So if your vision and what you see is good, but if your eye is bad, your whole body, everything in your life will be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in you, the vision, what you live for is darkness, how great is that darkness? I'm kind of scared of driving in Horizon, like especially like over here, Darrington or going up to, you know, because there's no lights. At night, I'm, I, I, come on, I love East Lake, you know, but have you ever driven down Darrington? I'm like, hmm, that's Clint County. I could see. <laughs> Isn't it like, you know, El Paso County? I mean, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm working with the city. I'm like, hey, guys, listen, if we're going to do something great for the city, it starts by us giving the best to the city. Why are you building a church over there where those things are? Because we, we believe in this city. Why are you putting, why are you doing the best? Because we, why do you do that in your house? Because we want to give the best to our children. We want to give the best to our community. But I tell you, when I drive down, there's places in which is like, man, if I don't have my lights on, I can't see anything. Can I tell you, in your life, there's places where you're walking that you're the one that's lighting up the way. But if your eye is bad, how are the people behind you? If you used to have greed in your heart, if you still have bitterness in your heart, how are the people behind you going to be able to walk? Scripture says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 8, be anxious for nothing. For how many things? But in, in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Here's the secret. Be thankful. Let your requests be made known to God. What would have happened if Martha would have said, Jesus, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, my brother, this is the whole thing. This is, this is the everything that I want you to take. Whatever things are true, 
Whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there's any virtue, and if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Finally, my brother, everything that's good, who's good, Lord? The Lord. Who, who's the one that I can look into that I know will never fail me? What he's saying is if you keep your mind, if you keep your focus on him, nothing, will, not, nothing can come against you that can prosper. But when you say, listen, I got this, what you're really saying is um, I'm going to do things my way. I'm going to be working, and I'm going to make sure I'm doing this, and I'm going to make sure I'm this. And then I'm going to ask him, Jesus, why don't you tell other people to change? And, and God's calling us and saying, listen, I love you so much, and all I want you to do is just sit with me. Because see, if you spend time with me, you'll look like me. If you just spend time with me, you'll look like me. Uh, I, one of my favorite couples, uh, you know, they, uh, uh, they, they started several Christian schools. They did uh, amazing things in the city, and I loved watching them. They were in their 80s because everything about them was as, as if they were one. They were eating, and at the same time, they were eating. Papa Han and Nana Han, they will eat at the same time. People that just impacted my life just by seeing them. I would tell them, hey, did you guys, did you guys plan to dress the same? And they'll be like, no, are we dressed the same? They had been together for 55 years. They didn't have to talk to talk, to have communication. I would just see them in the way they just spend so much time together. And they were happy about this. I think many of us, you know, we look like what we spend the most time with. For that one, I'm going to charge you. That one's not going to be for free. <laughs> because, you know, many times we, we just, how come I look like this? How come this is happening in my life? Okay. And I, I just want to invite you, you know, to sit with him. Somebody say focus. Anna tells me 15 years into our marriage, um, I think I want to stay home now. Remember the vision? Remember the dream? I know we talked about this 10 years ago and we said I had to be present. I'm being present, but you know, you need to work. You make more money. I just feel God is telling me I have to stay home with my kids. See, because I know we're giving them time, but I don't know if we, come on, listen to me. I don't know if we're being present. I want to create memories with them. I believe that's what God is telling us today. I want to create memories with you. I need you to look at me in that problem, in that situation, and those things that you can't change. I need you to look at me. I need you to look at me how you want to plan and what you want to do and, and what you say. I'm not sure if God wants me to change. I want you to look at me. Just look at me. And if you look at me and you stay with me, if you abide in me, you remain in me, John chapter 15, then fruit will come out of you. You won't have to force it. It's just going to be part of who you are. In Hebrews chapter 12, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, as we get ready to close, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, listen to this, endured the cross. He was focused. Didn't say he didn't suffer. It says he stayed focused despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Will you stand with me today? Habakkuk chapter 2 says, write the vision, make it plain. And I ask you today, as you're living, do you have life? See, it's not about doing and making sure that everything's set right making the place right, making your appearance look right. It's, that's not who you are. I've learned that I'm not what I do. <laughs> I am what others do. <laughs> wow, they're better than me. Part of a father, I'll put it to you this way. The heart of the Father delights in seeing His children reflect Him. The heart of the church rejoices on seeing Jesus, not on seeing themselves. 
fight the vision. The vision is about the call. And the call is simple. The call is, I want you. I can believe she said yes. I can believe I asked. <laughs> I didn't have furniture. I hadn't finished my career. God is not looking for people that are ready, equipped. He's looking for people that are available. So would you close your eyes where you are? He's calling you today.